Welcome to this podcast from Stratfor, leader in global intelligence. Senior diplomats from the United States, Germany, China, Russia, France, and Britain are meeting in Frankfurt today to see if anyone can come up with any new ideas to persuade Iran to halt its uranium enrichment program. Hello and welcome to Stratfor. I'm Colin Chapman. Ahead of this meeting, Iran has skillfully been softening up those who question the value of much tougher sanctions against the Islamic Republic, notably Russia and China. China said overnight that it was ready to work with other nations to reach a settlement. This after Saeed Jalili, Iran's chief nuclear negotiator, said in Tehran that the new government also stood ready to hold talks with world powers to deliver an updated proposal with, quotes, strength, logic and strong support for republicanism, whatever that may mean. We've not been able to establish whether this proposal is just a delaying tactic or something worth reading. It's not been circulated. But doing the rounds is another paper, this one by the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is due to drop in people's pigeonholes on September the 14th. Don't hold your breath. If you expect it to clarify the status of Iran's nuclear program, you likely will be disappointed. All it'll do is to provide fodder for chewing the cud. It'll portray Iran, as in the last couple of days it's been portraying itself, as reasonable, conciliatory, claiming enriched materials meet IAEA safeguards and so on. The shorthand for this is playing for time. Washington and its closest allies won't be impressed. It'll point to many examples where Iran's behaviour leaves much to be desired. It'll look for any evidence that Iran has provided to the agency showing it's not running a nuclear program for military purposes, and it won't find it. The agency report will be subjected to mind-numbing interpretation from many quarters. But one thing we've spotted is a mention that Iran hasn't answered questions on a possible role that a foreign national has played in explosives development work. This role is being said to include visits to Iran. Reports suggest this individual is a Russian, and of course, it's no secret that the Kremlin has dabbled in Iran as part of its strategy to distract the United States, at least until when and if America concedes Moscow a sphere of influence encompassing the former Soviet states. Facing two countries reluctant to impose deep sanctions, Russia and China, and a swathe of European nations more inclined to talk than to deliver, Stratfor sees the United States as having three options. Brave talk, war, or real sanctions. Words are Obama's strong point, but not here. Mere words with no action will make Obama look weak. This month will be a big test of the president's foreign policy. He can't afford to look weak. Second, war. When your country is bogged down in Afghanistan, it's trying to extract itself from Iraq, and is having to worry about growing debt at home, this isn't much of an option. Iran holds the key to global oil supplies from the Persian Gulf through the Straits of Hormuz. If attacked, it could lay mines and send the world economy, now in the most fragile of recoveries, into a tailspin. Option three comes back to sanctions. Believe it or not, Iran imports 40% of what Americans call gasoline and what most of the rest of the world call petrol. Constraining that would require Kremlin support. If the Russians will run explosives to Iran, they'll surely run gasoline. Watch Stratfor for updates on the talks with Iran. I'm Colin Chapman at Stratfor. Thanks for being with me today.